Hey, what the hell's going on, you guys? It's Duple Play Negative AE, and welcome back to another episode of Higurashi. Last we left off, uh, Oishi was just telling us how stupid it is to go back there. Um, I think what this is, is this is just him trying to start something. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he said, like, Oishi was, like, a counter mage, or, like, Oishi's the one that's killing Rika, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. There would, I, that would be a stretch. Uh, no, I don't want to exit. Um, that would be a stretch, but who knows? You know, I, I would take anything at this point um, because we're suspecting everybody for the murder of Rika. I would say everybody except for Rika's friends, um, I think, is um, up for grabs, except for maybe Rena. I don't know. Rena might be a while. I don't know. I'm going to stop talking and continue the story. If we continue our movement, will the people of. You know, we'll become our enemies too. That's possible. The Sonozaki family may get involved if you continue this commotion. Sonozaki family is anti hyojo If you try to save Satoko-san with the people from Hinamizawa, that's a huge show of disrespect towards the Sonozaki family. It can create a huge problem. I know by this point, this is a warning, not advice. An ignorant young man in Hinamizawa is making noise, trying to wake the sleeping dog. I'm aware that you are trying your best in this village. I'm aware that you are trying to do your best in this village. That's why I thought I should let you know about this. Uh, I'm sorry if I made you feel upset. I love you, Namizawa. I made a decision to make this place my home. I feel motivated about the big job I got in the festival, too. Is it really wise for me to try and create trouble right now? Just talking to you as your friend. I'm not trying to threaten you or anything like that. I'm not trying to make you do anything. I just wanted to give you this information. He smiles at me, stops on the cigarette. Sorry for the, the pauses between the stuff. For some reason, my mic is shaking like there's an earthquake. Um, and it's California's, so I wouldn't put it past it, but it might also be like a train's coming or something like that. I don't know. Uh, um, I thought I just made a decision to do what's right, uh, but was it just a little stupid to, uh, it was just a little stupid idea of a young boy. Do I have to grow up and think about this more? I feel confused, but wait. Does that mean I don't have the courage to risk losing something? Am I not brave enough to save Satoko? I have to be the red fire. I can't give up even if everyone else gives up. I have to make other people burn up just like me. What's the matter? <laughs> you have such a strong smile. Thank you for the valuable advice, but I can't give up. No matter what you tell me, I won't stop even if the whole world tells me to stop. Even if the whole world is against you, huh? You're a strong man. If the whole world is telling me that I'm making a mistake, then I have to stop and reevaluate myself. However, I've already talked to, about Satoko's case with my friends over and over again. This isn't just my idea. I'm confident that our decision is the best one. You're right. People your age tend to do something morally wrong. However, you guys are very right. You are doing this democratically. Just like Dr. Udia was saying, your method is very correct. I know. That's why I'm positive that we're not making any mistakes. We're doing our best to save our friend. We're not going to give up just because we feel threatened. We are her true friends. I have faith in us, even if the rest of the world doesn't. I believe that's what friendship is all about. Hmm. You have a strong will. None of my detectives are as strong as like you are. He smiles at me. I can tell by his smile he's not trying to pressure me. It's totally the opposite of that. He shared his information with me to confirm that I'm ready to face this challenge. I don't have to think about whether he was advising me or warning me. A man has many things that he wants to trust, even if other people are against him. But it's important to listen to advice. It's important to listen to advice, but there are some things that you can never give up on. That's what being a man is all about. <laughs> I also have a strong will like you, you know. About five years ago, the person I respected as my brother was killed. He was murdered? The case was solved. But I'm continuing the investigation alone because I suspect there's another person in control behind the scenes. 
The department told me that I'm wasting my time. They told me to stop the investigation. But I can't give up. Just like you. Are you getting close to revealing that suspect? Hmm. I don't know about that. Anyway, if you have such a strong will, you have nothing to be afraid of. You must pursue what you believe. They threaten to cut my retirement money if I don't stop the investigation. But I'll never give up. We men are stupidly honest sometimes. You're exactly right. We can't give up no matter how risky it will be. It's important to pursue your goal. That's the way a man should be. We'd rather die than give up our passion. I agree. It's not manly to go back on what you decided. He agrees with me strongly. <laughs> we make a fist to reaffirm our manhood. I know it's not simple to save uh, simple road to save Satoka, but I'm never going to give up. I'm going to save her. I have no doubt about that. GG, well played. Okay. Well, um, I expected that to go a little bit differently. I thought that that was where the story was going to turn. Although, to be honest with you, I, I think that the story is going to turn on Watanagashi, and we were close this time because we we're so early. Um, I think as soon as Watanagashi happens, that's when everything dies, right? That's when everything. That's where everything goes to die. Is Watanagashi. Um, okay, no relations, sending her back to school. It's just... Do them one by one here. Please hold for a minute. Who are you, son? Someone from the local government is calling you. Hello? Hello, Sonizaki-san. This is Ida, or Ada, from the local government department. Thank you very much for the o Ohagi the other day. You're welcome. Thank you for your work at the Culture Festival. Also for taking care of that large parasol. How much does it cost? We use it every year, so we might as well buy one. We brought the large parasol from the teacher. I checked out the price, but it costs about 200,000 yen for the domestically made ones. I also found one made in China, and it's about 80,000 yen. I don't care if it's made in China. Just get one so we don't have to cause any trouble to a, to the teachers anymore. We are actually ordering the one made in China. Once it's here, you may want to take a look at it and make the decision. Also, we've been holding the same Edo-style tea party for the past three years. We need to call a teacher from a different style now. Can you guys look for some teacher for next year? Some other teacher for next year's ceremony? Oh. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We will search for a different tea ceremony teacher. Anyway, I have something to ask you today. Sorry, I kept talking about our talking. I kept on talking about the parasol. So, what do you need? We were wondering if you heard anything about the case of Hyojo Satoko-san and Hinamizawa. Hyojo Satoko. What? Talking about that blasted Hojo girl? What did she do? Well, she has recently moved in with her uncle, but she's getting abused by him. Have you heard anything about it? Her uncle? The Toko is abused? No, I've never heard of that. Oh, well, if you didn't know, that's okay. To tell you the truth, someone came to the child consultation center to make a petition. According to them, the petitioner is very persistent with the appeal. The manager of the Saga Consultation Center felt that it's better to talk with you if you already knew about it. I don't know anything and I don't care. Where would I do anything for that pitiful child? The Sonozaki family has nothing to do with this. Have you heard anything about it from the village council? No, no. What are you saying? If Kimiyoshi was helping that blasted child, then the Sonozaki family would know. Who is petitioning the child consultation center? I heard some of her classmates were there. Well, as far as I know, I guess it's something that her classmates are doing, and the village has nothing to do with it. Of course not. I don't know anything. The village has nothing to do with Satoko. Conversation was forwarded to the child consultation center. If Oryu is not behind this commotion, they do not need to take this case seriously. 
The manager tells the staff to just listen to what they have to say, but never say anything to promise the girl's safety. Ibarra Keichikun, huh? I guess a boy like that will grow up to be a debater specialized in government issues someday. Okay, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, so we lost this one. Because the child consultation center is not going to help her. The only option that I see is murder. <laughs> what are you going to do in this situation? Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm trying to think of civil ways to handle this, right? If you're really adamant about helping your friend... Um, I can't think of a way that you could do it civilly under the current rules that we're presented with. So in this world line, at least to, to the point that we're at right now, the, it's, it's gone too far. There's nothing we can do. At least that's my opinion. That, that's what I could, what I think of. If they find something to do here, I would be very impressed. And I think that's why it's such a viable option in the past game to do murders, because like by that point it's already taken. I think there could have been countermeasure steps uh, before this happened to kind of prevent this from happening, um, and that that being kind of like not having Satoko go out or go out and um, meet her uncle, because uh, her uncle would have had to kind of visit the house. Um, And even that, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of, I want to talk about, but I want to also continue. So he got another call from that annoying consultation center or the school. That woman is so petitioned she won't give it up that easily. He's sure she will call the child consultation center again. The biggest reason why he won't send Satoko to school is that he's afraid he's, she's going to seek help when she goes there. She pretended like nothing was wrong when the social worker from the child consultation center was here, but that's only because he was right beside her. She will betray him as soon as she gets her chance. Then, then the child consultation center will be here on short notice. Perhaps the police might come for come and get him for assaulting Satoko. One of his friends told him once, or uh, once told him that the child consultation center works with the police sometimes. Tepe had a lot of weight on his shoulders. If the police get here, they'll be questioning him about the other troubles that he's involved in. You can't let that happen. All he needs is the money. He can leave this awful village as soon as he finds his brother's bank book. Pepe usually stays at home because he doesn't like the way the other villagers look at him. That's why he asks his friends to come over and place Mahong with them. But he needs at least three friends to come over if he wants to play Mahong. When his friends are not available, he just stays at home, home alone and watches TV. He started using his time to sniff around the house for the treasure. Satoko will clean up the mess that he makes. Um, this is not his home anyway. He doesn't care if he breaks the furniture. After he cleared out the closet, he went out to the attic. He pulled out all the chests and searched through them thoroughly. His wife used to be a sneaky woman. She must have hid it somewhere very unusual. He messed up the whole first floor and got up to the second floor to search for more. The next moment, Satoko came tackling at him. Not Nini's room. What the hell? Can't go inside Nini's room. Tepe immediately thinks that she's hiding the bank book there. Tepe gets rid of Satoko and forces his way into Satoshi's room. However, Satoko tries to stop him with all of her energy. It's funny for him to see Satoko rejecting him this much, but it also surprises him a bit. He asks her why she doesn't want him to go into his room. You don't want me in there because it's your brother's room? You don't even know if he's still alive. And he is alive. He will come back. Don't destroy his room. What are you saying? I'm not going to destroy the room. I'm just trying to clean up this room. Why would you have to save this room for someone who's not here anymore? I need to clean up this room. No, no, you can't. What the hell? I can already imagine the voices in my head. Did you know they released a voice acting, like, full patch of everything 
on Steam. Like I wanted to, I wanted to like pick it up, but I feel like I'm already like a decent, decent way through this, if not halfway, more than halfway through this, this um, chapter. So I like, I almost don't want to buy it for the rest of the half, and like I don't really mind the, the graphics. I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, I I have the money to kind of just drop down and and get the updated version. It's just, I don't know. I feel like it came out halfway through. I started playing this. Sudoku's crazy behavior convinces him that he should stop provoking her for now. Pepe is really good at making threats. Despair makes cowards courageous. If he ignores Satoko and destroys this room, she might just run away from this house. He doesn't want Satoko to be near him, but he also can't let her loose. Fine then. You promise to be a good girl and won't go inside of this room. Alright? Got it? But if you make me mad, I'm not going to leave this room alone. If you escape from this house or tell people about the abuse, this room is going to be destroyed. Did you get that? He's sure that the bank book is inside of this room, but Satoko will go crazy if she finds out that he entered this room. She, he is not happy about the promise he just made with her, but at least this can keep Satoko under control. It might not hurt him to send her off to school. If he keeps her home again tomorrow, that might, that teacher might come to the house with the police. He was only keeping her at home because he was afraid Satoko would talk to other people. If she's not going to do that, it's better for her for him to send her to school. He can sneak inside Satoshi's room while she's gone. Satoko, I guess your cold is all better because you were a good girl. Go back to school tomorrow. He's the one who told her to say thank you when he gives her approval to do something. But it annoys him that she's saying it over and over again. Get out of my sight, you little brat. You're so annoying. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I feel like, why would you believe that? Why would you believe that he's going to stay out of... What's his name's room? <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I just feel like that's a thing. Knowing knowing the personality that you've... Or knowing that... Um, your uncle's personality from having been bullied by him for so long. You would maybe know that he wasn't the most trustworthy person when it comes to promises or... Or anything like that. Granted, I know she's like... Little. So <laughs> maybe she doesn't understand... Um, but still, I would be like, wait a second, you're probably gonna not, um, not honor that. That consultation center contacted her uncle because she was missing from school for three days in a row. I'm sure Satoko was able to come to school today because of our effort. However, we can't really celebrate after seeing Satoko's painful look. Satoko, we were so worried about you. Are you sure nothing happened to you these past three days? I really had a fever these past <laughs> these three days. I'm sorry for making you guys worried. She starts telling us why she didn't come to school. Nobody's even asking her that. I think her uncle told her to say that to everyone. It's so painful to see her like that. Brenda seems more angry than sad. I feel the same way. My throat hurts because I feel because I'm so angry. There's so many questions I have about the story. And maybe after, like, everything's all said and done, maybe I'll put my final questions, like, out there. The, I, I don't know. There's just so many questions I have. <laughs> it, it, there's just so much, so much stuff in the past. A lot of it has been answered, but there's still a lot of questions. Letting Satoko cut to school because he's now sure that she won't do anything that would put him at a disadvantage. It's as if she's he's treating her like a tamed animal. Is it too late already? Wait, what the fuck? What was that? I think of the broken Satoko I saw once in my imaginary world. Satoko, you're working so hard. Of course I am. I'm fine, even though Nini isn't here with me. I slowly reach out my hand toward her head. As a reward for working you so hard, I'll pat your head. Do you mind? She doesn't reply, but she won't refuse either. I slowly, 
put my hand on her head. She doesn't react to it, but a tear rolls down her eye all of a sudden. Is she crying because she doesn't want to be touched? That's not it. It's the opposite of that. If I stop patting her now, it will hurt her feeling. Sotoko feels obligated to survive without her Nini. But that doesn't mean that she doesn't want anyone's help. She can't appreciate my patting hand openly. She has no choice but to cry silently. Toko-chan, we won't tell anyone if you cry right now. After Rena talks to her, Satoko starts crying like a baby. I feel relieved knowing that it's not too late yet. She hasn't suffered the fatal emotional wound that I saw in my imaginary world yet. However, her tears make me realize that I need to save her as soon as possible, no matter what the whole world might say to me. Totoko, everyone is going to save you. I promise you. Totoko, we weren't just doing nothing for the past these past three days, right, Kei-chan? Right. We are petitioning to the Child Consultation Center. We're asking them to save you from your horrible uncle. You don't have to do that for me. It's not just us. Right, Tomita-kun? It's not just me. Okumura and the whole class are fighting for you. That's right. We all went to the Child Consultation Center together. We're going today, too. Right, Mebara-san? Yep. We're not going to give up until we save you. The whole class agrees with me. Satoko seems a little surprised, but then she becomes expressionless again. Is that why the social worker came to my house? You don't have to do things like that. Satoko, did he hurt you because someone from the Child Consultation Center visited your house? She won't answer. I don't know what her silence really means. Soon, Chie Sensei comes to the classroom. She must have heard the noise we were making. Jojo san, are you feeling better now? We don't know for sure if she was really sick or not. All of us, including Chie Sensei, are feeling the same thing. Yes, I'm good now. I'm sorry I worried you. I'm okay now. Are you coming back to school now? Yes. You don't have to be worried anymore. You don't have to talk to the social worker anymore. Jojo san. If you feel overwhelmed, you can come to my house. Uh, I'm on your side, okay? You're welcome all the time. Sensei, don't act like you're the only one who can help her. Satoko, we're all on your side. That's right. You can come to my apartment, too. We have an extra room, so you can use it as your room. She can't do that. Satoko is my pet. She has to come back to my house. Nipa. See? You're not alone. Everyone is trying so hard to save you. But... I don't know if they will ever understand our passion. If what Oishi told me yesterday is true, once they find out the Sonozaki family is not backing us up, they might slow down on resolving this issue. All we have planned is to go there with more people and petition the same thing. The Child Consultation Center is going to say the same thing to us. It's not going to be any different from yesterday. They'll tell us it's a natural thing for her uncle to take care of Satoko and uh, because he's legally her guardian. They will also tell us there's no proof of abuse. Why not? Because Satoko denies the abuse. I appreciate your kindness, but I'm fine. That's a lie. Rena says, it, says strictly with a smile. You're not okay, Satoko-chan. You're not fooling us well enough. All of us here, and many more people know that you are in pain right now. That's why we're doing our best to stand up and help you. We are reaching out our hands so we can save you from the struggle. But we can't save you without you. She's right, Satoko. No matter what we say to the center, they tell us there's no abuse because you're denying it. We all want to help you, but we can if you don't accept our help. I understand. I was just like you in the past. I thought no one could help me. I thought whatever I was doing was the best thing. That's why I didn't even accept my friend's help. 
but someone taught me something. I can't even remember who it was, but someone taught me something. The world you want is right in front of you, but you can't get there unless you take your friend's hands. It doesn't mean anything if we're the ones who are reaching out our hands, or we're the only ones reaching out our hands. So Toko-chan, you have to reach out your hand to us too. We can take each other's hands and get back to the world we want. Rena, who told you that? I don't remember. I think I heard it when I before I went to kindergarten. Can't remember who told me that. But I can still clearly remember that feeling. I'm here because of what that person taught me. I agree. Whoever it was that taught Rena, he was not wrong. Satoko, you think it's better not to ask for help? You, th you think that's the best thing to do, but that's not right. Look at yourself in the mirror. Is that the face that you want? I'm sure it's not. You don't want any part of this world. I can take you back to the world you want. We're reaching out our hands to you. Our hands are almost touching you, but we can't, we just can't reach far enough. If we could, we'd pull your hair and get you out of this mess, but we can't make it. So you have to reach out your hand too. Our hands are right here. They're right in front of your nose. So take them. If you reach out your hand, we'll just pull you up to the happy world. He's not going to take it. Satoko won't reach out her hand. She just stares at my hand as if she's praying for something. Her fingers are shaking, but she won't try to reach out her hand towards mine. I feel like I want to scream out in anger, but I don't want to scare Satoko. If I do that, she'll never trust me again. All I can do is wait for her to reach out her hand to me. Thank you very much. Really, thank you. But I'm really fine. I am. S Satoko. She needs more time. Satoko needs more time to sort out her feelings. But the time limit is getting closer and closer. It's unfortunate that Satoko doesn't even realize that. The next moment, we hear someone coming toward our classroom. By the sound of the footsteps, we can tell that it's the principal. I don't know why Satoko is jerking like she just got electrocuted. The door opens quickly and the principal comes inside. He seems relieved to see Satoko back in school. However, Satoko reacts dramatically and strangely. She gives an unexplainable scream, runs to the back of the classroom, and hides behind the curtain. No one in the classroom can understand... Can understands her action? We never thought it was because the principal showed up to the room. Principal realizes it quickly. Satoko is scared to see him. Jojo kun are you okay? He talks to her in a kind voice, but Satoko is still afraid. It's obvious that Satoko is scared of the principal, but we can't understand why. Are you alright, Satoko? You don't need to be afraid. We're all on your side. My uncle is... Satoko claims that her uncle is here to get her. We all stand up and look around us. I've never seen his face, but we're in the school right now. If someone unfamiliar is here, I can spot him right away. If he tries to force Satoko out of here now, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to end the fight right here. Right, end the fight here. And she doesn't think the same thing, but we don't see her uncle any around here. She's scared as if he's inside the classroom, but I can't find him at all. And then I realize. Satoko is afraid of the principal. I can understand that she would be scared of his footsteps, but she's still scared after he shows his face to her. This is not normal. I realize how much stress Satoko is dealing with. Rika-chan hushes Satoko and whispers into her ear. It's okay, your uncle is not here. Your mean uncle is not here. But he's there! My uncle is there! He came back, or he came to take me back home. Calm down, Satoko. Did you take your shot today? My uncle is here. What, sh th what does that shot do, by the way? It just protects her from death, right? It doesn't do anything crazy? 
Shot? What are you talking about, Rika-chan? Okay, chan you have to get EDA for her. Just tell him that Satoko is in an emergency. Hurry up. Jay, let's take her to the nurse's office. What's wrong, Satoko-chan? Satoko-chan! Call the manager. We have to let the doctor see her. Does anyone have his number? I do. Use the phone in the teacher's office. I heard the nurse to nurse's office... I head to the nurse's office after I ask Mion to make a phone call to EDA. There are lots of students in front of the nurse's office. Chie sensei forced out the other kids who entered the room with them. I sneak behind her and into the room. Satoko is lying down on the bed and she's still shaking from fear. Rana and Rika-chan are there with her trying to calm her down. I speak in a small voice so I won't scare Satoko. Is she okay? What's going on with her? Uh, I don't really know, but she's very scared. She thought the principal was her uncle. Hard to believe that. He was right in front of us, and he was speaking to her in such a kind voice. Hard to believe that she couldn't tell that it was the principal. When there's a dark spot on the wall, what will it look like to you? What? People who hate flies will think it's a fly. It may look like a spider or a cockroach, if that's what you don't like. People tend to see what they don't like when they really can't tell what something is. Like that's a weird comparison, but yeah, okay. Sure. When she heard the footsteps of the principal, she thought of her uncle when she heard the footsteps of the principal, but she was scared even after he showed up. That's what her illness is all about. She can't organize the information quickly enough. What does she mean, illness? I tried to ask Rika-chan, but Satoko is becoming even more frightened. Rika holds her hand gently and tries to calm her down. Rena taps my shoulder. She's quietly telling me that we should leave Rika and Satoko alone in the same in the room. I agree with her. Satoko is in a tremendous shock right now. Going back to the classroom for now. Yes, please do. Ren and I get out of the nurse's office. My classmates are still asking Chie-sensei about Satoko's condition. As soon as they see me, they come over and ask how she was. Let's leave it up to Rika-chan for now. Satoko is frightened right now. Please don't do anything to make her afraid. She will only get more scared if we continue to make noise like this. Let's go back to the classroom. The manager will be here soon, and he'll take care of her. You called him, right, Michan? Yeah. He said he'd be here right away. He said to let Rika-chan take care of her. And not to let her out of the nurse's office. Get back to class, everyone. We're going to start homeroom. While the teacher takes our attendance, a car arrives on the school premises. Everyone pays attention to the car. Three people in, with white gowns come out of the vehicle. EDA runs into the school in a hurry. We're surprised to see three people here. It makes us worry that Satoko is in worse shape than we expected. Chie sensei feels the same way. She leaves the class to Mion and hurries to the nurse's office. Despite our worries, Satoko comes back to the classroom about ten minutes later. She still seems depressed like this morning, but she's no longer in that state of panic. Satoko. Are you okay now? I think you should rest some or rest some more. I'm sorry I scared you. I'm fine now. Satoko-chan, stop being a bitch. <laughs> what are you doing, dude? I'm very bothered. Chia sensei comes back to the classroom, and at the same time, I sneak out of my room so I can talk to EDA and his staff. <laughs> She's young, so I get it. But at the same time, stop it. Get some help. Manager, is Satoko really okay? Ibarasan. Yeah, she's fine for now. We should keep our, our eyes on her, though. It was just a little panic attack. She's all good now. Just a little panic attack? Are you sure? You were saying that Satoko has some kind of illness. I must go now. Please, call me if anything happens. 
He bows and leaves without making any comment. It seems like he is avoiding my question about Satoko's condition. Keiji, can you promise to keep a secret? What? Oh. Yeah, I can, actually. If you would tell me all the secrets ever, please. Satoko has been sick since a few years ago. She's been getting treatment for that illness for a long time. Surprised to hear that. I mean, she was already sick when I first met her. I've never seen any signs of it, though. That disease can't be cured easily. But she can live a normal life as long as she gets proper treatment and medication. Let me see. Sounds like it's under control. I had no idea that she was sick until you just told me about it. She should be fine, right? Why is that a secret? Why is why is that a secret? I want to know. <laughs> what what about that information? What about that information? It should be kept a secret. Not in a good condition right now, so it makes me feel hesitant to use the word fine. I wonder what kind of disease Satoko has. Based on the one I saw earlier, she might have a mental illness rather than a physical one. It might be because she got, or because of the abuse in the past. I heard she, that mental trauma is not easy to cure and it needs medical attention at times. I'm sure that's what's going on with her. Satoko has to take two shots every day. Since her uncle has been, was being mean to her, she forgot to take the shot this morning. You mean Satoko becomes emotionally unstable if she doesn't take these shots? Riku-chan nods quietly. So shocked. The Satoko I know is an energetic and mischievous girl who is always jumping around. can't believe that she becomes like a scared little animal just because she forgets to take her shot. She becomes very afraid when she doesn't get her shots. Something happens or when she hears something or sees something, she feels like they're coming to harm her. So she thought her uncle came to the school when she heard the principal's footsteps. That's right. When she convinced herself that the footsteps belonged to her uncle, that became the truth for her. Even after she saw the principal's face, her mind told her that it was her uncle. That where illness is all about, not being able to organize information quickly. I don't want to know what the disease is called. I feel so bad. What? You don't even want to know what it's called? Why? I want to know what it's called. I had no clue that she's been fighting for her sickness for so long. Keiichi, please don't tell Satoko anything about her sickness. Why not? I guess I shouldn't ask her. What? It might not be a nice thing to talk about her mental, mental illness. Mental illness? I guess that's what she's trying to tell me. Head to the classroom, but is she okay now? I feel like Keiichi's not asking all the important questions and then like why is it why is it being kept a secret from Satoko herself I feel like seriously sick to the point where she requires doctor attention I realize something the next moment hey Maybe we can have her hospitalized? We can force her to stay in the hospital even if she refuses. That way we can save her from her uncle. Yes, that's a great idea. EDA suggested that before, but Satoko refused it. It's not about her refusing it or not. If the doctor tells her to stay... Eiji. If Satoko doesn't go back home, her uncle is going to get rid of her Nini's room. What? Satoko feels obligated to protect the Hyojo residence until Satoshi comes home. He's taking advantage of her? Tepe is telling her that he's going to get rid of Satoshi's room if she doesn't stay home? That's horrible. Please don't tell anyone about this. She is not very good at controlling her emotions, so she might get very angry about this. She talks about Xi'an, but I also feel angry about this. I have to calm down, though. I need everyone's help in order to save Satoko. I can't ruin everything by acting foolishly. I have no time to stop. Damn it. If Satoko asked us for help, we could help her right away. 
Just because she hasn't asked for help, it doesn't mean that she doesn't need it. We need to help her as a friend. Especially now that we know that she's trying to control... He's trying to control her by threatening to get rid of Satoshi's room. She told you that he's threatening her by telling her she's going to get rid of Satoshi's room, right? Can't we take that as an SOS? Yuka-chan nods slightly. Keiji, we don't have much time left to save Satoko. I'm aware of that. She had a panic attack because she didn't take her shot this morning. But I'm sure that if she stays in the current environment, it'll be too late to save her in a matter of days. I saw her future when I saw Satoko crying behind the curtain this morning. This is the third day. We have ten times more people on our side than we had the first day, but we're not going to stop yet. Keiji. It's not easy to save Satoko. I've tried many times before, but never succeeded. Really? You don't remember. But you're different this time. I think you're getting very close to saving her. I believe that you're someone who can change destiny. What does she mean when she says I don't remember? I don't have time to ask questions, though. Keiji, I will slap you in the face, dude. I will punch you several times if you don't start asking questions. Actually, that's the only thing that you should be doing is asking questions. I feel like Rika also needs to stop being a jerk and inform me of all the things. So, please. You're right, I'll change destiny. Watch me do it. Okay. I feel like this is a, a good place to stop and I don't I don't necessarily want to go over an hour um, so I'm gonna end it around here um, just because I, I know that if I continue it's gonna go over an hour um, and I always look at the time and I'm like oh I can play for a little bit longer but then I always go over an hour so I'm gonna stop it here um, I, I you know I, I aim for 45 minutes um, but if it's a little bit less or a little bit over that's cool too um, lots of stuff. I know there was a lot of talking this time around. I have a lot of things that I want to say, uh, sometimes. Sometimes I just want to read through the story, and I just read through the story. Uh, but sometimes it's just a lot that I want to, like, think about, um, and so I talk a lot more. This one is no exception. Um, I feel like Keiichi's dodging all the questions. Like, he's like... First of all, it's like, keep this a secret from her. I want to ask why, but I think I'm going to keep my questions to myself. Why? <laughs> Why would you do that? What's the disease name? I think I'm not going to ask that question. Um, you know, all, all the important questions that I wanted to know from that conversation, KG was like, you know, maybe it's better if I just didn't ask those questions. Why? And for what reason <laughs> would that be better? Um, I don't know. I feel like it's more and more apparent to me that this is not the world. And with a, one more game, that would make a lot of sense. If 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 we came really close in this, and then Rika was like, that's how you do it. These are the events that I need to have happen. Um, and then she realizes that she can change fate from this world line. She changes fate in the next game, and then that happens. You know what I'm saying? And Watanagashi hasn't even happened yet, so I'm I'm guessing. Here's what I'm what's gonna happen is we're gonna get some sort of like crazy hope going on, right? Um, something's gonna happen. It's gonna be like, oh crap, we're gonna save Satoko, and then Watanagashi's gonna hit, and everything is gonna hit the, the the shitter, dude. Everything's gonna hit the shitter, and we're gonna have to deal with the later half of this game kind of going forward. Um, with that kind of. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? With with that, I don't know. Hope, I guess. I don't. I don't know what I'm what I'm looking for because I completely lost track of what I was saying. Um, yeah, I don't know. I th there's a lot of stuff that I have questions about too. Is like, um, there's a lot of like, Keiichi was crazy moments that I'm like, really though, was that really, the, 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 really did stuff happen, and then Keiichi was just crazy. Because, like, like I said before, when he killed the uncle, when he killed the uncle, like, a, like a while ago, uh, and I think I mentioned this in a couple a couple episodes ago, 
But when he killed the uncle a while ago, um, and he went back to school, and he was like, uh, I, you know, I, like, stopped the uncle. And then everybody was like, oh, you did what? You did what? And it's like, everybody's eyes were, like, on me. And, like, I guess that could be considered of, like, like paranoid Keiichi, but at the same time, the same damn time. I don't know. Um... I don't think I don't think that there's anything that I'm like overlooking I, I feel like uh, with with like when writing a book you want to try to make it as, as least obvious as possible if that's the case if you wanted to make it as least obvious as possible I would say Rena I would say Rena's the one that's behind things um which would make sense I would think if Rena's the one killing she's Kind of the poster child of this game is is Rena. Like when I went into this, she was the only girl that I knew on the cover because she was like this. Uh, she was like the scary girl, and it was like horror and it was cool. Um, so she's like the poster child for the series. So it would make sense to then you know bring her bring her into a scary light, like kind of humanize her throughout these, these chapters, and then at the end, hit her with the evilness again, you know? That would be an interesting kind of loop that she could do. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to brainstorm. I'm going to go ahead and end it here, though, because uh, I've been kind of talking for a little bit. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this episode, let, hit the like button, subscribe if you have this already. I'll see you guys in the next episode, whenever that may be. Um, and peace out, you guys.